Welcome back to another Mac Tech Tech. Today we continue our crawl out through the Fallout with Dogmeat Ever Loyal. This Naya Commander is going to ETB, mill some cards, and let us cheat back an aura or equipment from our grave back to hand. And whenever any of our equipped or enchanted creatures attack, we're creating those junk tokens for a little bit of impulse draw. As always, we're taking 10 cards out and adding 10 cards back in, leaving our lands untouched. So let's take a look at what didn't make that cut. Starting off, we have Acquired Mutation. This is a lovely little aura for two and a red. Beefs up a creature and goads them. And whenever the enchanted creature attacks, the defending player is going to get two rad counters. So taking this out for a few reasons. One, it's our only source of real goad. Uh, goading is good, but only having one source of it kind of makes it unreliable, and once that creature dies, it's kind of just gone for good. But I think more importantly is those rad counters. We also don't have a ton of rad counter support. And if you're playing in a pod of just these decks, you kind of don't want to pass out rad counters, right? Sure, maybe you get a little bit of damage, maybe they mill something that they need. But that, uh... That Mothman, he's getting a little stronger over there from this, so we're going to take it out for now. Blood Forged Battle Axe follows up that mutation, and, you know, for three mana, we get to get an extra two power. Not great, not awful. Should our equipped creature deal combat damage to a player, we get to create another copy of the Blood Forged Battle Axe. That we then have to pay two mana to equip, so... Again, I just don't, I don't feel like we're going to value town with this battle axe. Brass Knuckles really feels like it's in a very similar slot, right? For five mana, we don't do anything, right? Uh, you have to actually spend six mana in order to guarantee that you have two equipment on a creature, and that six mana gives that creature double strike. And sure, if you were going wide, right, you could spread equipment around and give two creatures double strike, but I just don't really feel like that value's there. Crimson Caravaner follows up those brass knuckles on the chopping block, and they are a double striking trampoly 1-2 for 3. Should they manage to actually get in for any damage, we're going to create a junk token. I feel like we have enough junk token production, and the fact that they are such a small body for 3 mana... Yeah, I know, we're in equipments, we're in auras, we could make them bigger, but we, we shouldn't need to. Duchess Wayward Tavern Keep follows up our Crimson Caravaner, and whatever creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to put a quest counter on it. We can pay one to remove quest counters from permanents we control to create junk tokens. It's honestly a very slow way to make junk tokens. I feel if we cared more about the impulse draw, they'd get to stay, but we have a lot of normal card draw already in the deck, and we also have a lot of other ways to make these junk tokens. So, while it's kind of cool and kind of works with our Wasteland Survival Guide, I don't think we need it, and it's gonna go. Gunner Conscript was probably the toughest cut we've had to make. Uh, they get a little bigger for each aura and equipment attached to them. Should they end up dying, we could get a junk token for having an aura, or having equipment on them. Maybe both. Maybe we get two junk tokens when they die. Not bad. Definitely look, looking to be a voltron boy. But I think we could do better. Perception Bobblehead follows up that gunner. And is a three cost mana rock. Which on its own is fine. Uh, it's not great. We really want our mana rocks to be around two mana. We can also pay 3 and tap it to look at the top X cards, where X is the number of bobbleheads we control, and then cast a spell of mana value 3 or less for free. And again, it's it's not a bad effect. I really like the bobbleheads, but if I'm going to play with the bobbleheads, I want all the bobbleheads in the deck. And not only would that not be an interesting upgrade guide, I don't know that any of these decks, except for maybe science, would really benefit from having all of the bobbleheads. And the only reason that science even gets a pass is because we're going to get energy for casting them. Squirrel Nest follows up the bobblehead, and honestly, I don't need to enchant my lands. It's not doing me a lot of good. Um, 
And also, I don't want to tap my land to get a squirrel. I'm not a token deck. We have some go wide ability here, but you know, I just, I don't think these 1-1 one -one squirrels are going to do it for us. Veronica, Dissident Scribe, follows up that nest. And, you know, lets us loot on attack, which is cool. It technically combos a little bit with our commander. If our commander let us l grab things from the grave when they attacked and not just on ETB, be a little bit stronger. But as it is, we're going to cut it. Wild Growth is another aura enchantment for lands. And we have a couple other ones already in the deck that are doing this, but stronger because it's not limited to green. So for that reason, Wild Growth got cut. With that being said, we have 10 cards to add in, and we're going to start off with Sagarda's Aid, which is going to let us cast all of our auras and equipments at flash speed. And when the equipment ETBs, it's going to auto-equip onto a creature. So this is going to speed us up a ton. It's a great turn one play for us couldn't be happier with it. Fighter class follows up that aid and is going to let us tutor up an equipment. We have quite a few good ones in the deck and obviously if you further beef up the deck with some more powerful more expensive equipments this is a nice way to just go ahead and grab them. We can further level it up to reduce the cost of equipping all of our nice little equipments and I think the last stage is honestly the best one, which is whenever a creature we control attacks, up to one target creature has to block it. Right? So, we're removing key synergy pieces of our opponents, and if we're wide enough, we're really just making way for, like, our big BP boy to be like, cool, no one's left to block you, you're getting in. Last of our enchantment additions is Bear Umbra. Bear Umbra is going to give a little bit of power, and make it so we're going to have a lot of extra mana, right? We're untapping all of our lands when the enchanted creature attacks, and the totem armor is icing on the cake, offering up a little bit of protection. Open the armory, follows up that totem armor, and it's just a way for us to search for an aura or equipment, put it into our hand, and shuffle. Uh, so tutors are just always good in Commander, right as a singleton format. We're just looking for ways to kind of make ourselves a little more consistent. Moving up into creatures, we have Shram, Senior Edificer. A little bit of card draw off of our ores and equipments coming in. We don't really have a ton of vehicles. In fact, I don't believe we have any in this deck. But we have plenty of the other two, and that card draw is going to be nice. Kutzil, Malmet Exemplar, is going to make it so our opponents really can't interact with us on our turn. We love this. And when one or more of our creatures with power greater than their base deals combat damage to a player, we get some card draw. With all of our ores and equipments floating around, most of our creatures are going to have power higher than their base. So, just very consistent card draw for us. Kellen, the Fey Blooded, is an adventurous human fairy. Again, a tutor, right? Two mana tutor. And once they hit the field, they are a 2-2 double striker. And all of our other creatures are going to get a little bit bigger for us, kind of piling on equipments and auras to them. Halvar, God of Battle, is up next. And he's making so all of our equipped creatures have double strike. And at the beginning of each combat, not just our own, we get to choose a target aura or equipment attached to a creature that we control. And we get to just go ahead and move it around a little bit. If we wanted to, we could play our god as a Sword of the Realms, passing out a little bit of Vigilance and making it so whenever the equipped creature dies, we get to return it back to hand. So a nice little way to like recur some of our important pieces if we want to go that route. Xanatha, Compassion Paragon, is a first striking Vigilant Lifelinker, and they're going to reduce the cost of all of our auras and equipment spells by one. So... The more you're playing in a single turn, the more value that she's generating. Last, but certainly not least, our golden nightmare of the deck, Chishiro the Shattered Blade. So Chishiro actually really enables a more go-wide strategy that doesn't really cost us resources, it's just rewarding us for what we're already doing. So whenever we cast an aura or equipment, or rather I should say when they just ETB, 
we get to create a 2-2 Spirit with Menace. And they're also passing out power. So at our end step, each of our modified creatures, which means anyone who's equipped, has auras on them, or has any kind of counters, they're getting a plus one, plus one counter to boot, and they're doing it every single one of our turns. Now, this is normally where we would transition over into some honorable mentions, some cards that might be a little too expensive, you know, just didn't quite make that top 10. There's honestly too many to count, uh, but you go with any of the swords of, right? Sort of, you know, ice and fire, uh, life and death, other adjectives. <laughs> um, there's also some auras that came out in very recent sets that are very strong. But really, in my mind, that's kind of what you'd want to go with. It's just more powerful equipments, more powerful auras. Call it a happy. But guys, that's the upgrade guide. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you stuck around this long, go ahead and hit like, subscribe to the channel, maybe even ring the bell to ensure that you never miss an episode. And until next time, good luck with your builds.